Ciao Juventini of the world, ciao all the participants of the FIFA Club World Cup 2025. <laughs> yes, 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 yes Fares, you will be there. Yes David, you will be there. Yes Giancarlo, you will be there. Yes Barbara, you will be there. Ciao Tad, you will be there. Bogdan, you will be there. Thomas, you will be there. Matthew, you will be there. Roberto, you will be there. Maric, you will be there. Andy, you will be there. And Zuccio, you will be there as well. Like Nestor, like Pinu Bianconero, like Feles, like uh, Dustin, like Rigas, like all the people in the chat. You will all be there in a fantastic summer in the USA. Juventus will be there. The second club to represent Italy. We will be there. We will be there. We will be there. We will be there. And I can already guarantee you that I will be here on the channel. Except if Juventus decides to extend my contract and to send me into USA. But if they don't, I will be here together with you. We will wake up in the middle of the night to comment the game. Ah, ne peut-être. Ah non, monsieur. Oh, oui, madame. Eh oui, monsieur. We will be here commenting the game. At least three games. Then... We can do really bad and we can go home immediately. But at least three games, we play them, we comment them, we do watch along. <laughs> I tell you this, I can already guarantee you that. Oh, there is one comment I need to answer later because I went totally crazy. Uh, with respect, of course, huh? everyone has uh, an opinion, everyone has an opinion, but I saw a comment in the comment section because I promised it and I made a short about uh, the jumping Beppe. I wanted also to start like that, a la Aurelio De Laurentiis uh, one week ago, 10 days ago, when he was jumping. Kinon Salta, eh? you remember Kinon Salta? Ta -ta 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 -ta. Chi non salta non va al mondiale. Chi non ta -ta -ra. Mamma mia, it's beautiful, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. All the Juventino are dancing. Yes, I am happy. Yes, I am absolutely happy. No, I am not ashamed. Absolutely not ashamed. I'm extremely happy because that win, that win of Barcelona over Napoli is the win of the Juventini. We went with all our hearts, with all our souls on the field. We won, we participated in Champions League this season. Yes, because they took it away from us. They took it away from us last season with the minus 15, minus 10. We give it back. We know, hey, pay attention. If you don't, then you have to, hey, you know what? We will disqualify you from the Champions League and you will not have the money and you will not be able to participate and you will not be able to earn on the field more points to say goodbye to Lazio, to Milan, to Napoli. They want the three teams to be able to take over Juve to go to that FIFA World Cup. And no. And no, but there is one thing that matters, one thing that matters, and I will show you immediately what is really important now. And De Laurentiis, he can say whatever he wants. This matters. Congratulations, Juventus Football Club, on qualifying for the FIFA World Cup 2025 as a result of Napoli elimination from the Champions League. Juventus are now assured of a spot via Europe's ranking pathway and become the 10th team from Europe to qualify for the tournament. Two more teams need to qualify from Europe. I don't know who. I don't care who. Important is that Juventus qualified today on the field and we did and I'm extremely happy. Let me read a bit of your comments and I will tell you how happy I am, how much tension I had, how stressed I was and why this is again important. I think that I made all of you sick. I made all of you sick because I don't know who else, but I was speaking about this 
since I believe months now, eh? about months that I'm speaking about that FIFA Club World Cup. Months that I'm repeating how cr I was not sleeping anymore. I was obsessed. There were two persons on earth that were ob obsessed for that FIFA World Cup. Beppe, myself, and Aurelio Del Rentis. Aurelio he tried everything. Disaster. Disaster. Let me read a bit of comments and then we go. A new member tonight. Eh, tonight. Let you know what? Wait, 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 wait. Let, let, let you know because there are some people. There are some people are here and they deserve the best. Some people deserve the best. Uh, of course, I can't make everyone happy, but the people that I can make happy, if I can, then uh, I do. So let's see if I still can. I'm not sure. Uh, bingo, we can. Yes, we can. Five memberships offered by uh, by Gigi Stuve. Ah, grande Gigi Stuve. Five memberships offered uh, randomly to Helicopter, to Alexander Tatti, to Maric, to Juan Mayo e to Carmelo Spattaro. Ah, grande, grandissimo. Super happy. Thank you, Gigi Stuve. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you, Juventini One, with a beautiful donation. Forza Juve, fino alla fine. Hope to see you in USA. Me or Juve, I don't know. Juve, for sure. Beppe, I'm not sure. I don't think so. But you never know in life. Thank you for your donation. And fino alla fine, Forza Juve. Ciao, Mindful Zebra. That became also a new member of the channel with a fantastic, beautiful profile picture. And Steve Cano, he extended because he doesn't want to miss what will happen here on the channel for the FIFA World Cup. But also, he heard about the Mercato is crazy song because the Mercato will probably look a bit better than it was initially planned. Future will be bright for us soon. Grande, grandissimo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's go, Beppe, for Guillermo Marcero. Juan Mayo, grandissimo Beppe, no, grazie to you. What is your prediction on the Mercato now, Beppe? Calma, 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 calma. Uh, okay, let's go, let's go. Do I need to repeat? Yes, I need to repeat. I need to repeat because it's super important. But first, let's say thank you to our friend, our friend Kanan, that just offered a membership to someone in the chat and randomly it went to Brandon Adjus. Thank you, Kanan. Thank you. Really appreciate it, my friend. And also, Brandon in the chat, I'm thinking that is extremely, extremely happy. Happy, happy. AB, ciao Beppe. My name is Anthony from New York, USA. An Italian American parents migrated from. Mamma mia, you will tell me all the history. Uh, migrated from south of Italy, Molise region. Love your channel. I am a Juventino at heart since age of 10, from 94, 95. Hey, you're lucky because then you just watched Juventus winning the Champions League. Grandissimo. Abba. Grandissimo. Anthony. Anthony. Grandissimo. Anthony. Okay. Uh, repeating. 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 Super important. Super important. Okay. Should I explain, should I repeat that Juventus is in financial trouble? Should I repeat it? Should I start with a negative note in a day of celebration? Because it is a day of celebration. Wait, before continuing, let me say thank you to our friend Mohamed Youssef that offered not one, not two, not five, but 10 memberships on the channel. Thank you, Mohamed Youssef, that is celebrating. He's happy, eh? because ultimately I feel Mohamed Youssef that is a bit more down. He's not happy. He's putting a lot of things in questions. The coach, the management, the players. And now he's happy because he's starting to see a better future for Juventus. Thank you, Mohamed Youssef, that offered 10 memberships to Guillermo, to Sean, to Matthew, to Aaron, to Brian again. Yeah, no, another Brian. To Fares, to Hasta, to Enzo, to Peniel, to Shirt Knight, and to Chef. Oh, no, Chef was already a member. Thank you. Grazie. And also Chuck, he decided to extend himself, grande Chuck, let's all laugh at Aurelio De Laurentiis, I don't want to laugh too much at De Laurentiis, I want to pity him, I'm a bit sad, I'm a really, no, it's not true, I want to laugh at De Laurentiis, <laughs> disaster De Laurentiis, grande, thank you Chuck for nine months, so, okay, okay, let's put everything again into context and why it was important, first of all, first of all, it is extremely important for Juventus to participate, point, Period. Stop. Over. There is a new competition and Juventus needs to participate. As easy as that. Guys, Saudi Arabia, Supercoppa. The people there, they were in protest. 
They didn't care about Napoli Fiorentina. Do we really want to send Napoli instead of Juventus? With all the respect. Then, if we are speaking about meritocracy, if Napoli sincerely deserved to go, they deserved it on the field. Go. And it's because of Juve that you can't go. But if there is a new tournament, you need to go. I'm not a jealous person. In general, I never, I'm not a general, per, per, jealous person. I always wish the best to everyone. But I tell you the truth. Next summer, in the month of June, when it starts and you see Inter and another team, random, eh? Lazio, Milan, Napoli, it can be Fiorentina, it can be Lazio, it can be whatever team. If you are not there, <laughs> guys, honestly, honestly, you're not happy. It's like when you watch the World Cup as an Italian and Italy is not there. Of course, you're pissed off. Of course, you're complaining. Of course, you're watching it. Yes. But every time that a team is playing, you say, why is Italy not there? Let me thank really fast, but fantastic guys today you are you are, you are just crazy let me thank to juan mayo with five memberships and brian as well with five membership offer guys today you are more generous than john elkan that is offering 200 million to uh, uh <laughs> to juventus for the capital increase today you are all John Elkan, more than John Elkan. thank you brian thank you juan mayo i'm sure that people are have super happy in the chat so when you have a competition, you're not participating, you're pissed off. So I really wanted to participate for the prestige, to be there. Also, we have a channel of football. I wanted to be there. I wanted to comment Juventus. Now, there was another reason why I also wanted it. Because I believe, personally, that Juventus was not given the right to have the possibility to, on the field, defend what they build. Because it's true. The Champions League result of the last four years were not great of Juventus, but Juventus was a team that every single Champions League qualified and participated, something that we can't say about the other opponents that we had, because they were not participated with consistency. It's true, Juventus did bad and deservedly were eliminated. It is correct, it is correct. The other ones were better, Ajax, Villarreal, Porto, or sometimes not better, I don't know. But anyway, we lost, we were eliminated. We were not able to go over the round of 16, which means you're out. You're out. But on the other side, this year, we qualified with all the problems in the world, with the bad game, with whatever you want to, we qualified to the Champions League and they took it away from us. That's a reality. The 100 million euro that Juventus should have in their pocket to do a rebuild of events, not a total rebuild, because because of ourselves we are in financial troubles. It's because of us ourselves. But that money that we earned on the field, we missed out of it with a lot of consequences. Eh? Not only you don't participate to Champions League, you don't participate to Champions League, you have at least three games at home where you can't have your people in your home buying tickets with increased prices for Champions League, the merchandising that you are not selling, the sponsors like Adidas, like Jeep, that because you are not in Champions League are asking to review it, lowering the fee that they need to give you. Because this is what happened. I don't know if we spoke about it on the channel or not. It's less. You are missing out of a lot of money. Capital increase. A lot of that goes because you are in red numbers in your financial books. The transfer market of Juventus was non-existent last year. That money went to Milan. Milan, they, that is at the moment one point over Juve in Champions League, uh, in Serie A, they, have the, they had the possibility to buy a lot of players. Pulisic, Chukwueze, Musa, etc., etc., etc. They bought a lot of players. When you go to a player and you say, oh, my name is Milan, I'm playing a Europa League. The player will say, oh, wait, first I need to listen to other clubs that will participate to that Champions League. If there is nothing, I will come to you. Juventus, they only went for one player, Wea, on the market, and they brought back a Nicolussi, they brought back a Cambiaso, 
they brought back a WEA. That's it, huh? Because we couldn't, we couldn't afford the next Mercato would not have looked great. Last year, and now I want to go towards the coach, a lot of people were asking, why are we not dismissing the coach? And there were millions of explanations why. Not that you can accept it or that you don't accept them, but one of the reasons that were spoken about was the fact that Max Allegri had two years of contract with a big salary, 7, 7.5 plus bonus that is not able to achieve last year, that is not able to achieve this year. But anyway, a 7, 7.5 that if you translate in gross, is 40 million, 14, 15 million plus the staff. Do you remember when we made the calculation of 40 million euro? If you don't participate to European competition, if you don't have this, if you don't have that, you can't even, because not only you have to dismiss a coach and the entire staff, but on top of that, you need to hire a new coach, a new staff. You can go with a really low cost coach, a tutor, for example. But it's a risk that you are taking, a risk that things are going bad because you can't reinforce the team and that you don't qualify to the next one. A lot of reasons why. Now, with this money that is coming out of nowhere, there is a double benefit. And then I will continue to read you because today is a day of party. Today is a double benefit. Not only you have that money, but it also doesn't go to the other club, to Napoli. Because if you miss out that money, you don't have the money, you're already in financial trouble. You don't have the money and your competitor is taking that money. We are speaking about a minimum of 50 million euro. If you go through, you can have 60, you can have 70. If you win that competition, that Juventus will not win. Let's speak openly about it. Juventus will not win that competition, except of miracle. Miracles happen sometimes in football, but not that much. If, 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 it's the other club that is taking it. And Inter and Napoli, they have each minimum 50 million that can even increase and you are missing out. When you go to speak to a club, to a player, and you say, come to my team, and you tell them, I have a jolly, I have a beautiful card. In the summer, there will be a fantastic competition that the world, the entire world will watch. FIFA club for World Cup. Real Madrid will be there. One between Barcelona and Atletico Madrid. There will be Chelsea. There will be Manchester City. There will be this team. There will be this team. There will be team from South America, from Asia, from Africa. It will be the top of the top of the top. Then you come. Then you come. It's easier. A player, an agent is more open for it. It's more open for it. Then there will be people, and in a second I will read the comments of Los Samurai, of uh, Matthew in the chat. Uh, let me read immediately the comment of uh, Matthew in the chat, because I think it's an important one. And first of all, thank you for your donation, uh, Matthew. Really appreciate it. Beppe, I'm still new to club finances, but can you explain me what a capital increase does for the club? Does it eliminate debt? Are they able to use the capital increase to buy players? Just want to know where it is applied. Capital increase is... The shareholders, the stakeholders that are injecting money into the club. Then you can do a lot of things with that money. Of course, when you are injecting money into the club, usually, usually it's not really a good sign. It's because you need that money. And it's not to just go and sign players. In our cases, it's because we gave 200 million euro. I believe if just out of my out of mind i believe 130 million 120 million went to avoid the debt created because of the non-participation to the champions league one champions league and all the rest and not only champions league one the other money will be spent for some debts because we need to pay uh, money that we asked five years ago so we made a, an a kind of request for a loan, a kind of loan for money that we needed to pay back. So 
part of that is also going for that debt because there were some interest to be paid etc at the end you will have like uh, 20 million euro something like that to invest on the transfer market but that money now is incredible for the fact that it's going in your pocket but also because you are sure about it so that means that you can start anticipating now what thomas is saying here in the chat are we ready to play there we need to start building now call juntoli to join the live it's exactly this today juntoli he knows that in worst case scenario this money will already be there what what will juventus do they will buy quantity and they will also try to buy quality Quantity is obliged because you will play Serie A, because you will play Coppa Italia, and you will play that FIFA World Cup in the summer. Now, we need to qualify to the next Champions League because that's a lot of other money that can come. A lot of new money, plus a new sponsor that we need to find. Otherwise, we have also problems there. So, you know, when two days ago we were speaking about 100 30 million, I believe, or 170 million, I don't remember, for a new Juventus as soon as possible. It is important to accelerate, to accelerate. Now we can accelerate because it's a lot of money. A lot of people tell me, yeah, but, but, but we don't deserve to go there. But tell me why Napoli deserves to be there and not us. We don't deserve because we are playing bad. That's People are telling me this. Beppe, we will not be able to compete we will be bad and we don't deserve but then explain me why on earth should napoli go because they did a fantastic season last year in the meanwhile three different coaches they are i don't know where in Serie A, a total disaster they are 35 points from uh, inter they are eliminated today barcelona in round of 16 why should napoli go there and not juve Tell, tell me why. L explain me why. Juventus is not playing well today. Juventus didn't build a team to play different competition. They built a team to play one competition. Things were going okay until January, end of January. Then we totally flopped. We know. But now we know that we can rebuild. Now we know that we can think with a bit more security. And that's extremely important. For me... Or to me, the qualification to the champ to the FIFA World Cup was vital. Was vital. When you go and negotiate, oh guys, but you, you don't imagine how many doors it opens. When you go and you speak with the new sponsor, I don't know, Etihad, Qatar Airways, or uh, Saudi Arabia Telephone, I don't know. Because we were speaking about, you know, some big sponsor from maybe Saudi Arabia, maybe from Qatar. When you go there and you speak with them and you say, we will put your sponsorship there in that FIFA Club for World Cup in the eyes of not only Serie A, not only Champions League, but in front of the eyes of the world, you can, you can be sure that money will increase. I'm not saying that you will earn 100 million euro, but you can increase it because this is publicity, this is marketing, this is advertising, it, and you will reach so many different people. We needed this. Without this, it would have been a total disaster. Barbara is saying, we need this one, we need it, we need it, we need it, we need it. Today, I can tell you, <coughs> that I'm seeing the future not brighter, because I always saw the future bright, but I didn't know when. And I'm not promising you that next season the future will be fantastic, will be bright, we are rich. No, I'm not doing like the Milan fans a few years ago, we are rich. No, because we are not. And the transfer market will not be fantastic. We will save on the salary of Paul Pogba, on the salary of Alexandro. We will save maybe on sacrificing a big player and reducing uh, and, and leaving his salary, maybe investing in other players, a Juntoli that is there since one year. You remember when I told you Juntoli is already working on different roles with players A, players B, players C. Because depending on the budget that we will have, he will know 
how much he can spend and which target he can go and contact. Will it be a Merino? Will it be a Ferguson? Will it be a Cope Manners? Will it be this? Will it be that? Will it be a possibility for a loan for Mazraoui? Or should you go for a Birindelli from Monza? Today you have more possibility to go for the bigger players. But Juventus has one big task because we are celebrating today and I'm extremely happy. Also because it's in front of De Laurentiis. With all the respect, I'm pissed off. I'm pissed off because last year I, he I, I needed to hear from Gravina, that is the president of Federazione Italiana Calcio, I needed to hear that De Laurentiis and his Napoli were the model to follow. Why there is an investigation for the Ozyman transfer, while after a year they threw everything away. They were about to open a cycle, they threw everything away. He's pushing violent with gestures, the cameraman yesterday. He's violent with his words, insulting everyone, everybody. I don't want to be represented in the world by Aurelio De Laurentiis. I'm sorry. Last Samurai, 23 months. Thank you, my friend. Aurelio De Laurentiis announced 38 new Napoli. Hey, probably yes, probably yes, probably yes. Uh, that he's obliged now, but he knew he's not stupid. You can say everything you want about De Laurentiis. He's not stupid. He knew the importance of this one. He really, really, really understood. If there is someone that understood it, it is De Laurentiis. Then how he acted was extremely stupid because you can't go to a match of Champions League when you know that you didn't qualify yet to that FIFA World Cup with Rijkaard from A22. You can't throw shit on UEFA and then complaining, eh, but, eh, but, we want, no. Maybe, maybe, because we have to be honest, probably there was a penalty. Maybe that penalty he would have received it. I don't know, huh? Was there a penalty, yes or no? Did you watch the game, Barcelona-Napoli? Then if you want to, I can do a mini recap of Barcelona-Napoli. Yeah? Because, guys, that center defender, that center back, mamma mia, mamma mia. That Yamin Lamal, or Lam Lamin Yamal, I don't know. What a player, eh? what a player. We are speaking about 16 years old. We are speaking about the other one, 17 years old, Fermin Lopez. I don't know. Barcelona is not top. Eh? I was scared. Eh? They were not. But guys, that center defender, he was going with passes a la prime Bonucci. Eh? Did you see that? Kubarsi, that's the name. Kubarsi. Guys. I heard about him. I watched him a bit here, a bit there, but not really focused. Today I had my eye on him and I couldn't take it away. I couldn't take it away. Prime Bonucci. The, the long verticals, the vertical, every single time accurate. Because you have, I don't know, a Danilo, you have a... Uh, a Bremer, whatever, defender. Rugani, not only you, eh? in general, in the world. Defenders, they have a pass accuracy that is extremely high. But center defenders, they are playing horizontal to the, to the next one that is next to him. They are not taking risk when they are building from the back. And that's why the accuracy of the passes increases. But this guy was taking crazy risks. But calculated risk at that age, guys... Guys, this guy is incredible. We'll come back on the game if you want to in a second. Ciao, Beppe. Greeting from Belgium. Ciao, Mas. Uh, let me know what language you speak. You speak French. You speak uh, Dutch because I speak both because I also live in Belgium. I hope that I will be able to come to a game uh, this season. I love your videos. Thank you, Junior Mas. Junior Mas. Mas sounds Dutch. But let me know uh, where you are from, uh, Junior, because I live in Belgium. I'm recording from Belgium. I'm live from Belgium. So uh, 
I'm always curious. But thank you for the donation. Thank you also for the kind uh, message uh, saying I love your video. It's just fantastic. Uh, thank you, my friend. So hopefully Junior Mas is still there in the chat because uh, if he's new, maybe he doesn't know that uh, sometimes I take a bit of time before reading the comments. I'm really sorry for that. Had to wait eight minutes. Eight minutes is still okay. Huh? It's still okay. So Junior, I'm waiting for your comment in the chat. Massimo Pegoli, 18 months. Grande Massimo. So let, now I spoke a bit. Let me speak about you. Or let me read your no penalty, no penalty. Uh, how to begin a cycle the Napoli way and good time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Didn't watch. 17 years old, 17 years old. Incredible, incredible. Um, I'm Domu. I really dislike our strategy of sacrificing players to sign other players. It makes building a team capable of winning Champions League extremely hard. We are always strengthening our area and weakening another one. It's true. It's true, but Juventus has always... Has wait, let me reformulate. Juventus has never been, even in our peak period, a team that is keeping everyone. Zidane has been sold to Real Madrid, but Juventus knew who to sign to compensate that big loss. But it didn't happen only with him, happened with uh, Christian Veri only after one year, happened with Simone Inzaghi. No, si mamma mia. Sorry, with Pippo Inzaghi, because if we are speaking about players, Pippo, if we are speaking about coaches, Simone, Simone is there, uh, especially this year, especially this year. Uh, no, but you, you, Juventus knew already. Now the pro it's not a problem of keeping, not keeping. The problem is who you, who you, who you replace them with. That's the difference. That's the difference. Then sacrificing. I have no problem with sacrificing. Oh, can I nail this? Extension, not extension. Don't expect that he will stay here for long. Today I was reading an article that was not concerning uh, uh, Juventus, but I was watching some uh, Italian expert that were saying <laughs> Leao, Lautaro Martinez, and uh, a third player. Uh, I don't know who. Um, I don't know. I don't remember. Anyway, um, the three of them are strong and are ready for the next step in their career. But their next step in their career is not remaining in Serie A. It's to going to a bigger team. What are the bigger teams? Or in Premier League, or you go to, uh, unfortunately, it's like that, huh? to a Real Madrid in Spain, to a... I don't know if I can say it or not, but a Paris Saint-Germain, probably, a Bayern Munich, uh, Ossiman, sorry, thank you guys. No, no, it was Ossiman. It was Ossiman, Leao, and, uh, and now I forgot the other one. Ossiman, Leao, and who did I say? Ossiman, Leao. I just said it, I forgot. Help me, please. And Lautaro Martinez. Thank you. Thank you guys. Uh, for Sometimes I forget the players of Inter. But, um, uh, it's the reality. But this is not because of Juve. This is not a problem of Juventus. This is a problem of the league. The league that is stagnating. And luckily, Italian clubs are doing quite okay in Europe. You know, I don't support Italian clubs in Europe. Even if this morning I said, except of Napoli this year, for me, they can do uh, uh, whatever they want to. We can even win a fifth club uh, in Champions League. Can even be beneficial for the league. Can be beneficial for Juventus. So why not? Why not? Uh, supporting is a big word. But if they do well, I will close an eye. Then winning trophies, I hope not. But luckily they are doing well, but it's an initiative for their clubs. It's a moment of glory. It's a moment of miracle. It is not because of... Uh, um, it's not because of Gravina in Serie A. By the way, Gravina has uh, his own problems. Junior Mas, ik ben van Lokeren, Beppe. Ah, Lokeren, Sherry Moon, Sherry Moon Tracks. Uh, ligt naast Gent. Uh, natuurlijk ken ik Lokeren en Gent. Ik woon uh, heel dicht bij Brussel, in sint Pietersleeuw. Dus, uh, le leuk dat je er bent, Junior Maas. Ik ben blij, ik ben blij. Uh, guys, sometimes I have to speak Dutch. And when we have people from our community, or at least the the country I'm living in, let me at least speak a bit of Dutch. 
ones that we can. Thank you, Junior. Thank you for your donation, buddy. Really, really appreciate it, my friend. Uh, look at that. Sir Raz is there in the chat as well. So you're not the only one that is living in Belgium. Uh, no, but that that's a reality. Look, Jim is as well from uh, from uh, Belgium. He's living in Yank. Uh, but translate, guys, I was just saying where I lived uh, because our, our buddy is, uh, is living in... Um, in Belgium as well. That's it. Um, what was I explaining? It's a reality. So don't feel attached anymore to players. First of all, when you are at Juve, don't feel attached to players. Never. Because from one day to another, they can leave. But this has historically been like that. Except of exceptions. And at Juventus, it happened a bit more with the Del Piero, with the, with the Buffon, with the Giorgio Chiellini. Um... But these kind of things are more the exception, especially in today's football. Then you can have still some Italians that can be there for eternity. And I'm thinking about a Locatelli, for example. I know that I will open a debate now. But a Locatelli for him, let the side that you like, you dislike the way of playing. But a player like Locatelli is a Juventino, born Juventino. And that Juventinita has been shared from the grandmother to the parents, to him. They feel another connection. If they tell you Manchester City wants you, they don't care because they went to the club of their heart. Of course, they need to play, of course. But that's what matters to them. <coughs> like a lot of Juventus women players that are extending also because of the love they have for their club. Because they like a, uh, a Boatin, Boatin that is fantastic players for Juventus women. When she was a uh, six, she was at the stadium supporting Juve. Like me, for example, I'm not the football player. I will never be. I would never have become a professional football player. I'm representing Juve on YouTube and Twitch when I'm doing the lives. I don't see myself to another club. It, because, because it's the club of my heart. Because it's different. A Locatelli can stay. If, if Nicolussi was playing, he would maybe stay. A Miretti, for example, because these guys are born Juventini. And for them, Juventus is the max. The other players, no. The other players, no. The other players, no. The players, they come, they play at Juve because of what Juventus represents. If Juventus is in Champions League, okay. If not, they can leave. Look at the Rabiot, for example. Rabiot felt in love with Juventus, with the supporters. And he really extended also because of that, because he didn't want to take some other risk, but because he was really great in that environment. But Rabiot is not born a Juventino. So for him... If you don't participate too long in Champions League, if you don't do, you can make a career choice. But it, it, it's not that easy because the affection, the attachment is not the same. And this is something that you have to live with. A player like Ken Anildis, he has grown in that youth academy of Bayern Munich. When he had the opportunity to receive a project where in one or two years he could achieve the first team, he, he was gone to the team that raised him. Oh, guys. That's the reality, yeah? In one year, in two years, if Kenan Yildiz is not satisfied with performances of Juve, the time that he's playing, he's gone. That's the reality. His salary or whatever, he is gone. It's true. It is like that. So, Huysen, look, Huysen. Had the opportunity to go to Frosinone. Had the opportunity to go to Roma. Why Roma? Bigger club as Frosinone. There was Mourinho. He didn't care. The story that Mourinho, enemy of Juve, represented Inter, was doing. He didn't care. When Mourinho said, come to me, he went. He didn't thought about what, what can the fans think, you know. He was thinking about himself. And it makes sense, huh? It makes sense. That's the reality. So that's why I'm telling you the 50 million euro of today 
are so important. You can't imagine. People that tell me, hey, I'm a proud Italian, I don't care. I'm a proud Italian uh, Napoli needed to go there because I support the Italian team in Europe. I don't care what you're thinking. Probably I'm a proud Italian as well. But I'm a logic Juventino as well. And a logic Juventino, you don't give away 50 million euro to a competitor, especially after everything what happened last season. And before, and before, and before. Um, Thomas, we need a mix of both. New blood is needed in every group over time. If no one uh, wants to leave, we risk ending. With. It's tr it's also true. It's also true. It's a hundred percent. I don't agree with that, Don. Uh, that Rabiot should respect Juve. Yeah, because all the players that even are linked to Juve should respect Juve. Uh, Rabiot was a fantastic player. Huh? I don't know if you know, but Rabiot was already a fantastic player with Paris Saint-Germain. Um, eh. No, guys. Uh, then that he had disaster seasons with Juve. Yeah, that he became good at Juve. No, he reached his level. He became better. But no, uh, oh, Rabiot of Paris Saint-Germain was a really great player. We rather overpay and bring Tonali back to Serie A. Man, no, leave him alone. Leave him alone, this guy. Uh, bah, bah. Good, huh? Good, huh? But pff, especially, oh, we already have problems. Okay, are you crazy, Enzo? You want to put him together with Fagioli? Then we... Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, no, no. Uh, separate all of them. Zagnolo here, Tonali here, Fagioli here. Uh, tranquilli, ragazzi. No, no, no. Uh, we already have enough problems, but we need to recover being at the top. We have Zidane, the, uh, among many other. I don't understand the question, uh, Juan. Can you reformulate? Of course. Of course, it was better to sacrifice Napoli. Uh, And that we should go back. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. But that's the plan. Huh? The, the only question is how fast can we go back to be a Juventus that is credible? Because now we can speak about the coach. We Yesterday I made a video. But by the way, people made me laugh yesterday. Huh? You made some of you made me extremely laugh because I made a video yesterday uh, where I criticized... Uh, the Atalanta game, uh, but especially I blamed also Max Allegri, the coach. Uh, and in proportion, I blamed more the coach than um, than the players, the team. So it was, you know, a shift in, in blaming. And uh, it makes me laugh because then a lot of people said, bah, Pepe, that's a fantastic video. This is one of your best video in a long time, of course, because I'm telling you what you want to know. Uh, it, it made me laugh because it's always like that, you know, when you hear things, that I'm saying that is going towards your idea, then it's a fantastic video. When I'm telling you things that maybe it's a fantastic video, but it's not really your idea, then you don't like the video. You may, yesterday, some of you really made me laugh in that in that video. It was really, really, really funny. No, because I made a video, I always, when I make the video, I think about what I'm saying, then I start, then I don't like how I'm saying it, and I'll start again, And but, but the idea is always the same. The idea doesn't change, huh? But now, sincerely, what I wanted to say about a uh, coach, not coach, coach, not coach. Guys, our team has problems, but not since today. Eh? Last year, we made videos about it. We made, you know, the paradox of Juve video. That was that was a good video. That was a sincere, good, sincerely good video. One of my best ones. Because anticipating the real problems that Juventus had on top of coach or philosophy or whatever. It's a team that is good in defense to play in a way it's good in the midfield to play in another way it's good in the front to play in another way but when you put everything together we have a problem and that's why we need to adapt and we are obliged to play that way then you have a pogba you have a fagioli you have an injury you have the coach. you have so many so many 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 different problems on top 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 but according to me you can say whatever you want to this team is not complete. And I'm sorry that I'm obliged to speak about Inter, but you know what's the difference between Inter, 
last transfer market and what I have criticized a lot about Juventus transfer market over the last few years, one thing. When Inter is signing players, they are signing these players for a specific role that they need. If you go back to how Inter changed, Inter started not with Simon Inzaghi, they started with Antonio Conte. They started with a 3-5-2 that a lot of people are criticized. 3-5-2 ah, ah, is... Big. People, sometimes they are not logic. 3-5-2 is the biggest problem of the world. It's the You can't play football with a 3-5-2. But on the other side, look at Inter, they are fantastic. Inter is playing the same way as Juve. Inter is playing the same way as Juve. The only thing that they are doing it well and we are doing it bad. <laughs> but when Inter, they go on the market, they go for, okay, this player leaves, we need a player in that role with these characteristics. If that player is not performing as much as we want, we let him go and we go for another one. Then we can speak about, hey, but he's free, he's not free. And they're, no. They are planning the role that they want to sign. And then they go for the name. What Juventus didn't do. When we sign, and today Kulusevski is again uh, <laughs> trendy. When we sign Kulusevski in the same season as Chiesa, we have a problem. Because at the time, Chiesa was meant to play on the right side. Kulusevski is a player that plays on the right side. We buy because we see opportunities. We see potential but we don't sign because we need someone in that role. Otherwise, probably today, we would have already some fullbacks. And that's the huge, big difference. Then you give a team to a coach, Pirlo, Sarri, Allegri. The quality of Allegri has always been to change the way of playing according to the players. And we play a 3-5-2 because we are obliged to play a 3-5-2. That's the reality. Uh, we change, oh, because people, they forget maybe, yeah? but we change from Paratici to Carubini to nobody to a Giuntoli that just arrived with zero budget. Uh, because I see already yeah, the first questions about, eh, but um, Giuntoli, what is he doing? We don't understand. He just arrived eh, on the 7th of July with zero budget. Let's see what he will do now. Um, ciao, Katana. Ciao, Pepe. A joyous day whenever I get to sip a good, strong espresso made with uh, Aurelio's tears. There is no context in which I would cheer in uh, for his benefit. I don't understand people that are, uh, eh, but uh, we love uh, Del Aurelio. Uh, boo, I don't understand. Boo. Um, whose fault is that, Beppe? I, I always said it. Fault is everybody with different shares. If you sign Cristiano Ronaldo and you take a big risk, a risk that is close to zero, but you still have a risk, and unfortunately that big risk arrives, you have a problem. If you let go Allegri, because you want to cha change the way of playing, you want to go towards a more entertaining way of playing, which is correct, huh? but you sign Sarri, and you don't back up Sarri, you have a problem. If you sign players for Sarri, when you already decided to let him go, and you give a chance to Pirlo, but you are not 100% convinced with all of the management of the choice of Pirlo, we have a problem. If you go back to Allegri, and you expect immediately to win, but you just sign Locatelli on lo without even putting cash, you have a problem. I believe that Juventus made a lot of problems. Then you have also an Allegri that created problems. Players that are maybe, some players that are not at the level or not performing as they should. I believe everyone is at fault. When you, have, when you are in a, in a situation like we are today, everyone is at fault. What I see is that Juventus is working to get out of that situation. It takes time. It takes time. But the good thing is that that qualification today, 
will accelerate. Oh, then you can still spend them bad. Huh? That money, you can still spend it bad. That's then Jundali's work to make it work. Uh, junior mass. Junior, if you want to, try to... You can, you can, if you want to, you write in uh, in Dutch, huh? but uh, I can understand Dutch. Unfortunately, the people they don't understand Dutch, so I will have to translate it. Uh, otherwise, it will be a problem for them. But uh, we hebben aanvallende steun nodig, snelle flank aanvaller die een mannetje voorbij kan. Eh, je hebt, je bent, je, je hebt gelijk. Uh, dus Junior is saying we need offensive support, uh, fast wingers, uh, offensive wingers, and also someone that can dribble someone. But I totally agree with the comment of Junior, 100%. Thank you for your donation, uh, Junior. But if you want to, the next time uh, also write, write in English so that also the other people can write. But yeah, of course we need that. Of course we need that. Then, to go back on Cancelo, when I was watching the game, I said, oh, luckily, yeah, Luckily, we, we gave Cancelo, we made that swap with uh, Danilo. Because No, luckily, honestly, because today he's giving us 50. It's a, it's, a, it's a swap that gave us 50 million more. It's a swap that gave us 50 million more. It's just crazy. Because that second goal of Cancelo, luckily, yeah? luckily, uh, luckily, 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 no, I'm super happy. Uh, jokes, jokes aside. Um, Oh, and then also this one made me extremely mad. Maybe I, maybe it's me, yeah? maybe it's me, guys. But oh, guys, you know one of the lesson I was teached when I was working in retail, when I was a, I believe, assistant store manager. I had once the the visit of um, the retail manager Europe. I was working at the Diesel. Uh, You know the brand diesel jeans brand i was working there and i did a, uh i was i was doing a good job i was young i was doing a good job assistant store manager i had that visit of a guy and um i was guiding him through the store i was guiding him i was showing him and he was extremely impressed by the work i did in management in the numbers in the thing i was doing really really great oh i remember because my manager he was off for six months because he was replacing in another store so i was alone in the store alone with my team he was extremely impressed so we did a really 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 well um and at a certain moment i was speaking with him in store and i was next to the fitting rooms and i remember that day i was speaking to him and while speaking with him I was like this, next to the fitting rooms, and I was like this, watch. Ah, it's a microphone. I was like this. You see my foot here? You see my foot? I was here, you know, with my foot here. And I was speaking to him like that. And then he said to me, you know, like, uh, um, what are you doing, you know? And I realized, of course, because these are the things that you don't do. I realized immediately because I'm a, a, an intelligent person. And I, oh, I'm, I'm, I said, I'm sorry. And then he looked at me and he said, retail is detail. In everything that you do, retail is detail. This is a philosophy that you have to put into your mind. Every detail matters. Every detail makes the difference. If you are putting your foot there, you're showing it to your other associate, to your team. They will do the same. And then what will happen? That part of the wall will look dirty, will not be beautiful. And then you will need to call someone that will come for a painting. And not only from that part, but probably for all the fitting room. You are doing cost. Hey, it was, it was extremely important, you know. These kind of, of lessons that you, that you are teached when you are a kid. Retail is detail. Now I go back to that picture. We are speaking about a president of FIFA. It's the top of the top of the top of the top. There is nobody over him. 
Today is announcing. Congratulations, qualify Boca Lupo to Juventus. It's turning that page and you see the logo of Juventus. This logo is the old logo of Juventus. This is the old logo of Juventus. In Juventus logo, there is no writing anymore. It is just the logo here, this and this. This part is not there anymore. Then you will tell me, eh, Beppe, it's something stupid, it's a deal. No. Retail is detail, but everything, the world is detail. If you are the president of FIFA, get your things correct. You use the right and only logo of Juventus. I get pissed off when I see other content creators using it, you know, especially on TikTok and so on. They don't care. They see PNG, an image of Juve on Google, they take it, they put it there and they don't care. Is it the end of the world that there is Juventus over? No, it's not the end of the world, but it's not the correct logo. And if you are a content creator, you need to pay attention because you are actually creating content. You need to be good. If you do a mistake, it can happen. But then next time you don't do it anymore. But if you are the president of FIFA, this is not acceptable. According to me, this is not acceptable. It is not. It is not acceptable. Tell me, guys, am I freaking out? Am I exaggerating? Or do you, am, am I right when I'm saying that, according to me, you can't go out in 2024 with a logo that didn't change yesterday? It changed like, I believe our logo changed, if I'm not wrong, huh? in 16. And for two years, we kept that writing. And then from 18, we took it away. So we are speaking about like, five, six seasons now uh, without the, tell me uh, if I'm exaggerating or not, but this is not the logo of Juve. And as president of FIFA, I'm, I, don't, I, I don't like it. That's my opinion. That's my opinion uh, about that. Then people, they know, it's, oh, it's fine. It's okay. No, it's not okay. It is not okay. I'm not sure he did it on purpose, uh, Marcello, I don't know. Oh, thank you to Takishi that uh, offered a membership earlier. I didn't even say thank you, but I know that Takishi is the man of the shadow. He's watching, he's enjoying, he offers a membership. He say, Beppe, I'm here, and then he's leaving uh, and, and keeping, you know, the, tele the television on or the iPhone, I don't know, open. Thank you, Takishi, for your membership uh, that you offered. Really, really, really appreciate it, my friend. Um, thank you, Gorgi. Uh, Stavros always on point. Where is my friend uh, Stavros? Just detail. I should open a, a channel with detail. No, but it's important. Details are important. Um, and depends on the level, of course. Huh? But details are important, are extremely important for everything that you do in life. Details, details make the difference huh? because you are not the best in the world. There is always better than you. But maybe the other one that is better than you, he will not pay attention to the details. And if you can make attention to the details, wait, huh? because that's another lesson. You can't go with all your focus only on details because otherwise you forget and you lose the macro. But you should be able to find a way to have your macro that well managed that you have time to take care of the details or at least that you are able if you have a team that that team is taking care of the details so that you can take care of the overview and then you are exception then you are exceptional random mysterics 28 months with us totally agree with logo that we represent the brand thank you really appreciate it Trivia or not, guys. Um, Peniel, these are some of the issues that you've allowed to question for the writing to be done since any is an image branding. 
but I don't think that uh, Juventus will now uh, go uh, <laughs> to, to Infantino creating a lawsuit because they didn't use the right image. Uh, and then they will tell us, hey, no, but maybe, 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 na maybe Napoli should go there instead of Juve. No, no, leave them alone. Today, I, uh, I don't accept, but uh, I will just uh, not make it public too much, otherwise it would be crazy. Um, Italian is uh, happily qualified. Ciao Riccardo from Australia. Hopefully you could celebrate today with the people in Australia. I know that uh, there is a big club there. Paisano Beppe, the logo is a brand which I don't like. I really like the old logo FIFA straight out of Mafia period. Uh, but oh, if, you are, if we are looking at uh, uh, the logo that is in your profile picture uh, next to... It, Hopefully I'm right, eh, Ricardo, next to the kangaroo. I hope it's a kangaroo, but no, because it's a cat or a dog, because it's small, if, if I'm wrong. Uh, but normally it should be a kangaroo, because you're from Australia. Uh, then it makes sense that you like it. But you know, um, if you're looking at the history of logos of Juve, We are, we are complaining, we are complaining, we are complaining, but uh, lo lo look at the history of the logos. Uh, it's funny, eh? um, because here, in uh, 71, so we went from these logos, okay, and then in 71, suddenly we go with this one. Uh, you can tell, be, ooh, wow, crazy, uh, wh what are you doing? I believe that in 79, a lot of people were extremely, extremely complaining about this logo from this one. Uh, that was actually this one in color. Uh, it was an evolution of this one, an evolution of this one, of this one, of this one. We go towards this one and we kept it for 11 years, which is extremely long, extremely long. Um, <laughs> then you have this, wait, uh, let me check again. You have, uh, you have this logo from 2004. I'm used to this one. I The one that I prefer is actually this one. Uh, personally, yeah, I really like this one because it's the one I grew up with. Then uh, I also like this one from 30, 31, but I was too young. But I really like this one from uh, 90, also the one that we won the Champions League with, etc., etc. Then this one, I got used a lot with it because I was a bit older, but I really like the one of the 90s. Then you see maybe in uh, also here, uh, 11 years, and you go back and you change. So 71, that's 11 years. Maybe in uh, 2028, we change again and we go for something else. I don't know. I don't think so, but it, it can happen. Eh? So no, for me, the logo is an evolution that was correct with what Juventus was trying to achieve growing as a brand, I think strategically it's a really, really great choice. I will always be convinced about the choice that has been made. Aesthetically, aesthetically, I prefer the one of the 90s, aesthetically. Then, you know, if I am the boss of a club that is, you like it or you don't like it, it is business. And I need to grow a brand because that brand will also make sure that I have new uh, revenues so that my sporting club can also become better. I don't hesitate at all. I believe it was a genius marketing move. I really like the philosophy, the idea, the work that has been done there. Then aesthetically, aesthetically, I prefer this one. Because I'm the one, it's the one I like the most, because I was used the most, I grew up with, I fell in love with that Juventus. But no, for me, I never made a, uh, a, big, uh, a big point of it. Um, no. What I would love, what I would love, is that, for example, we don't throw it away. That we keep it in uh, certain revivals, in certain shirts, for example, dedicating the third shirt with a vintage logo, that would be fantastic. That we can use it with a special line of a Juventus old logo, you know, that would be great. Uh, that would be great if we can do that. That's, that's uh, another story, unfortunately. Anyway, um, that's a horse, not a zebra. 
Bah. Maybe. Bah. I think it's a zebra. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Sasha. Uh, Beppe. I think next year away will get uh will have the 97 logo. Um I can't confirm. I can't tell you anything about that. Um we will see. We will see. You know that there are certain things that uh, uh I will never reveal. And that's why I'm not even watching the camera. Um Beppe, did your message that idiot Napoli print? No, I didn't message the rent is but uh uh, I posted the. Uh, I did a short about it, as promised, as promised. As an American Juventino, I'm very happy who qualified because I can watch. You see, Sahil is thinking about himself, and he's totally correct because Juventus will be in USA. Um, Ciao, Fyodor, grande Fyodor. Uh, okay, what else can we say about. Um, what else can we say about the, the reason why we are here? about the Champions League. No, the FIFA World Cup. Does it change the situation for Genoa? No. But I believe we needed a bit of enthusiasm and this one is accelerating. Accelerating a lot the process. But seriously, yeah? a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, no, we don't know yet. We don't know yet, Matthew. We don't even know the logo and the, and the trophy, how it would look like. Um, we are here to celebrate LJJ. What else? Tell me, ask me questions so we stay a bit longer. But Napoli. Oh, you, you, in the meanwhile, let you ask some questions so that I can answer uh, about the game. Barcelona, again, they started crazy. After, I believe, 20 minutes, they were already winning 2 0. But. I was like, mm, mm, mm. I'm scared. I'm not confident about Barcelona. And indeed, uh, after that, uh, the game was open until uh, that uh, that three one. I was impressed uh, by that uh, young defender. I told you, Lamal is uh, another level. I understand that Paris Saint Germain wanted to offer two hundred million. I also understand that Barcelona that needs money. They said no, no, it's not moving uh, anywhere. Uh, but what a level! What a level. Incredible. Incredible. Uh, Lewandowski, again, you know Le Lewandowski, for example, he didn't touch the ball. We, he, he was invisible. Lewandowski played a really bad game. Then, he's there when, he, when it matters the most. He's there when it matters the most. And he scores at the 83rd. Fantastic pass, of course, huh? Uh, could have gone even on target himself. Uh, Sergi Roberto, that entered really well. But the assist was beautiful. But he is there. Didn't touch the ball. He's there. He scores. Um, I agree with Sir Raz. When he's saying Lewandowski was invisible, we would have destroyed him if he played at Juve. Uh, but he was there and he scored. According to me, he did what he had to do. Because Lewandowski is really an a typical player from that Barcelona. Taha, that you are following every day. Uh, Barcelona, because it's your team. Tell me if I'm wrong. Lewandowski is really that a typical player. That it, It's not a Barcelona player, you know. It's not the profile that you are uh, thinking about when you think about Barcelona. But according to me, it works. He had a drop moment this season. But he's the player that you don't pass the ball to. But when in difficult moments, he's the guy that will take that ball. He will not think he will shot. Because, you know, Barcelona, you know what makes me angry when I watch them? When I watch them playing. Also today, they did it again. Looks like they... Looks like Barcelona is a team. If it doesn't come from something that has been trained during the week... They are not allowed to score. If they d didn't study the way how to pass and to go from here, then they don't go on target. They don't shot. As long as you don't have worked it in the week, you don't shot. 
Mamma mia, it's a disaster sometimes, really, to watch that team. At a certain moment, go with instinct, go with a shot. And that's Lewandowski. That's exactly why Lewandowski is there at a certain moment. To be there and to say, basta, stop with tiki taka, shot, score. Don't do the, the move. Um, you know, so, so I believe it's a, a out of context player that if you're thinking about it, makes totally sense to have, have in that team. Because that's the annoying part of Barca. If it doesn't come from tac, 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 we studied it, we know perfectly what to do. I know. We missed it, so we go back and we start all, all over again. Mom, what a disaster. What a disaster. I go crazy with that. Huh? Uh, yeah, Taha, I agree. Yeah, he's here to bail us win uh, when we can't win uh, with our total football BS. You see? You see? I, wa I was not wrong. Huh? Uh, ciao, Juve Pels. Grande, Juve Pels. Thank you, Ricardo. Grazie. Question. Which manager would you like if Allegri is part of a Rick? 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 I answered this question, I believe, the first time uh, 18 months ago, before it was trendy. I said, of course, with the available resources we have, uh, not going crazy with names that are impossible. I said Mota, but not now because it's trendy, because the papers are speaking about it. And I said all the reason. I will explain you because you made a nice donation, so I want to take a few seconds to explain why. Because when I saw him coaching last year, when it was not the Bologna of this year, at a certain moment in the season I said, you know, guys, people are speaking about Paladino, that is a good coach. Huh? People are speaking about Italiano. People are speaking about Tudor. People are speaking about this, about that. The Zerbi. Zidane, that is not feasible, for example. I said, you know who could be? It's Tiago Motta. Why? According to me. Eh? He already coached Youth Academy of Paris Saint-Germain. Already made La Gavetta in Italian. So coaching the smaller teams. Spezia, now Bologna. And Bologna with what he's doing. Can we speak still about a small team? In this moment, absolutely not. Even if Bologna is never a small team. It's a mid-table team. So small team, mid-table team. He's growing. He already, I told you, eh? coaching Youth Academy in Paris Saint-Germain. But also as a player... He knows what it is to prepare games that are planned two games a week. He was already in locker room with big stars like Ibrahimovic. It's a, it's a guy that is not blah blah. It's not blah blah. Uh, it's not a guy that is looking for excuse. I believe that he has an identity that is matching with you. Not too much blah blah, but also not shy to take responsibilities. He knows where he wants to go. He knows how to manage bigger people. He knows how to manage young people. He can have that mix of unknown promises, youth that he needs to launch, also to confirm big names. I believe he has a lot. I believe he has really, really, really a lot. Motta knows uh, Rabio. Yeah, 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 Vincenzo. Yeah, they know each other as well. Uh, so, according to me, he has a lot of qualities to succeed. Now, if you expect from Motta to arrive and to do a streak of 38 wins, and probably the expectations are wrong, he will need time as well. Saraz, work tomorrow at Zaventem Airport. Ciao, Saraz. But we will close as well eh, soon. Uh, Lil G, unpopular player. I would not like to see an ex Inter player as you were coach. I have no problem. If you saw, go back and watch the end of uh, Inter Bologna or Bologna Inter. I don't remember now. I think it was Inter Bologna. Watch the game. Uh, Inter Bologna watched how um, Tiago Motta. Oh, he played at Barcelona also. Youth Academy from Barcelona. So he knows Barcelona, La Liga. He knows Liga. He knows Serie A. He knows Italian national team. Look, Marcello is also working at uh, Zaventem. Go and say hello if you if you enter Zaventem. Uh, I don't know where you will be. But Sir Raz, Marcello is there. I know where he is, huh, Marcello. Uh, Sir Raz I already met. Marcello I already met. It's nice huh, to see people I already met in the chat. Um... 
Beppe, my only concern is he was an Inter. What's the problem? Conte was also a Juve player. He went to Inter. I have absolutely no problem with that. Uh, also because when at Juve, I believe it, there was one time a discussion, but was it really offensive against Inter? Look, oh, Sarri. He made these gestures when he was in the best, when he was uh, at Napoli. And then he came at Juve, he won a Scudetto. Uh, Pirlo was at Inter. Oh, guys, you are not speaking. Pirlo was at Inter. Pirlo was a Milan legend. Nobody's complaining about Pirlo. Eh? Baggio, Interista. I know that a lot of people in the chat that are present, one of the, their idol is Roberto Baggio. Uh, Roberto Baggio is Interista. Guys, that's the reality, eh? As Pirlo is in the lista, as Chiellini is a Milani, was a Milanista, like Maldini, Paolo was a Juventino as a kid. Yes, if we stop with that, uh, guys. Now Paolo Di Bala became a Romanista because he watched uh, Gladiator when he was a kid. Oh, guys. When he was at Juve, he was a Juventino because uh, he was uh, watching the, the cartoons with a zebra. Now at Roma, he loves, uh, because he loved uh, Gladiator, when he will go to... Well, to Chelsea will tell us that when he was a kid he was always uh, waiting at the bridge uh, to see uh, the fishes in the sea and that's why he loved uh, Chelsea well, I don't know but, but that's, that, that's, that's the reality guys that's the reality uh, I don't know if we go at uh, Brighton he will say that he loves Brighton because when he was a kid he was always watching at the sun and it was a bit too bright and that's why he said oh it's too bright I love bright Brighton it's like that huh, guys Morata, for example, Thomas is uh, saying Morata. Uh, Morata, he loved every club that he played. Uh, <laughs> Morata, he, he loved every club that he played. He was about to go to Inter as well. Eh? Quadrado. Quadrado, he went to Inter. Um, but it's like that. Eh? It's always like that. Um, Ricardo will be in Sicily. No, I, I can't go to Sicily, my friend. Uh, Italian is saying he played for you. I didn't say he played before or not. I said he is an Interista. I didn't say he played for Inter or not. He said the team that he loved in his heart is Inter. That's the reality. Ah, look, Italian is a big fan of Baggio. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, that's the reality. I'm sorry to, to tell you the truth. That, does that change the legacy of Baggio at Juve? No, it doesn't change. Baggio was a... Uh, mm, having a bad time at Juve, then he did extremely well and, he's, and he became the Baggio. No, he was already at Fiorentina, huh? uh, but then he did a fantastic, beautiful career at Juve as well, winning trophies before leaving and continuing his career in Inter Milan, uh, Brescia, Bologna. But the club of his heart, then you become a professional and you play for the shirt that you love. Look, Baggio, by the way, Baggio is one that, for example, he refused to take a penalty against Fiorentina. Baggio refused to take a penalty against Fiorentina. <clears throat> because it was his ex-club. Hey, Italian, he loves you. No, it's not, no. You love Baggio and you can't accept the reality. Then that he loves you or not, he's played five years at Juve. He won a lot of things, so of course, he likes Juve as well. But you can't refuse the reality, Italian. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I, I'm, that's the reality. Uh, hey, I know it, it can hurt if you never heard that story, but go on the internet and you type which team is uh, Baggio supporting and you will know. He, the stats will not change, eh? Italian uh, and Australian football fan. The stats will not change. It's like I tell you Ronaldo is a Juventino because he scored 101 goals in three seasons. It doesn't change. Eh? It doesn't change nothing. Eh? Ronaldo is not a Juventino. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, Sasha. I'm sorry. I feel bad. No, at a certain moment, it's good to understand the reality. Uh, But that doesn't change Baggio at Juve. Um, I spoke with a, a lot of players at Juve. I, you know what? Yeah, guys, when I am uh, 
doing the interviews with the players, I'm always in backstage with them before we start. I always ask them, uh, you are a Juve supporter or not? Um, and some, they say yes. Uh, some, they say no. Fyodor, it's, you have to pay attention because it's a different period that we are speaking about. In the past, players, they couldn't decide where they, they, where they could go. For example, when, it, when Baggio, for example, was at Fiorentina, he didn't want to come to Juve. This is the, the reality. He didn't want to go to Juve. He was obliged. <laughs> Signor Baggio, come in the office. We sold you to Juve. Take your, take your stuff and you go. If clubs agreed, uh, you went and there was nothing to say. Eh? Shut up and you go. So, you know, of course, you could have requests. You can say, oh, I prefer to go there. If there is an offer from that club, they contacted me, so an offer will arrive. Please, you know, make me a favor. I prefer to go there than there. If there are two offers equal or whatever, but it was the club that was deciding. Eh? You know, Conte has always been a supporter of Juve. Yeah. yeah. Bosman changed all of it. It's true, Jim. Um, Everyone who comes to Juve fall in love with Juve. A lot, but not everyone. Uh, I'm not speaking about now, eh? but I feel Felipe Melo, for example, not that much. Kulusevski, not that much, apparently. Uh, there are some players who... Who didn't fall in love, but it, it, it happened. No, the, the, I believe that Delicht really, really fell in love with um, with Juventus. Um, really appreciated Juventus. Uh, still likes Juventus, um, but he decided to go somewhere else. Love, guys. I don't know. Cancelo. I believe that C Cancelo had a really great relationship with uh, Allegri. With Juve, then today he said, uh, I'm sorry for the guys of Inter, but pff, I don't care about that. Um, Massimo, when does that happen? Look on the internet, like uh, our friend Jim said it, Bosman Lau. It's a Belgian, uh, but look here, it's written here. Jean-Marc Bosman, he changed it uh, with the Lau suit that he won. Baggio to Australia to watch Rama versus Mina. Boo. I don't know, guys. No. It didn't reject Barcelona to to be with us he rejected Barcelona because in his career path he thought that for himself it was better for his development to come to Juve than to uh, but it was not for Juve it was for himself and now uh, because sometimes we we don't realize that uh, but that's a really important one there are some players a lot of Dutch players that because especially Dutch players that are grown with the myth, the legend of Johan Cruyff, the myth, the legend of Ajax, you know, they, they have like one, one part, like Ajax, Academia, then you grow up, first team Ajax, and then you go to Barcelona, uh, because that's the natural way. Um, hey, sometimes you, 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 you change you change your, um, your, your natural path, and uh, it's an exception, but... It is for you, it's not for, for the club. It doesn't care. Dybala will go to Hell City and will say he loves Hell City because of the Humber Bridge and he used to fish from the Humber River. You see? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Oh, 
Okay, guys. Just landed with a plane. What did I miss? That we became uh, 50 million euro, at least 50 million euro more rich than we were before you took the plane. Uh, Beppe, you finally come to USA to watch World Cup games. Uh, I don't think so, honestly. I don't think so, honestly. Uh, because uh, my second channel at the moment is not growing as fast as I want. It's growing, it's growing, but not as fast as I want. And you know it. Uh, and also this channel is not growing as fast as uh, it should grow. And why is it important? It's important because more you grow, more people are interested. But with 28, you're not interesting uh, to go to make some vlogs and so on and so on. Then they, they contact other person, so it will be tough. Then going on myself for the World Cup, I think it would be uh, not fair, not fair, because my wife never uh, had the opportunity to go to USA. My son neither. If you go there and you start, you know, spending time to go to World Cup, and to watch also World Cup, because it's not only you go to a game and basta, no, you go, then there are three games a day eh, at a certain moment, and you spend your time in USA uh, watching football and not with your family, it would not be correct. So, no, if I go for work, for content creation and so on, that, that's another story. But uh, if I go with my family on vacation, I don't believe so. Buona notte, Sasha. Ciao Siamak, my friend. Grande Siamak. Uh, grandissimo Siamak. Oh, let's be honest. The first thing I thought when uh, Napoli was, fortunately for them, uh, when it was official that they would not qualify, the first thing I thought was, uh, I was happy for De Laurentiis, actually. To be honest, I was happy for De Laurentiis. No, but seriously, can you imagine? He promised probably of euphoria. He promised uh, to the team 10 million euro if they qualify to the World Cup for clubs. 10 million euro. Uh, 10 million euro. Luckily, luckily, now he's saving uh, the cost of it. Luckily, he saved the cost of it. Uh, he's not obliged to pay 10 million euros, so he should be happy. It's a, also him. He's a more rich man. Uh, Beppe, can we meet one day in London, King's Cross Station, for a pick? Uh, yeah, I go to London with a, uh, with, a, with a Eurostar. I take a picture and then I come back. Mamma mia, you know how much I miss London? I was there... Pfft, Every two weeks in the past, um, I was seriously. Yeah, I love London. One of my favorite cities. If I go, of course, I tell you. Huh? Um, Beppe, please do not stop your other channel. Just do it. it. Didn't grow overnight. Give it. Oh no, I will not stop. No, no, I'm not someone that gives up. Uh, easily, but uh, no, but of course, uh, would be nice if it um, if it starts to pick up. Today I decided to start changing the thumbnails. Today I start changing the thumbnails, which uh, which is important um, to be a bit more attractive. Um, But it's true that if I'm looking at uh, the video of yesterday, 315 views. The videos of the day before, 292. It's not a lot, huh? It's not a lot. Because it's a big effort. It's really a lot of effort. You need to watch the games. You need to uh, 
um, to find the titles, to inform yourself. It's not only you, right? it's really phew, a lot of information. Then you record, then you edit, then you put online, then you have to do a thumbnail. Uh, it's a lot of work. Then you have to do a short, then you have to do this. It's, it's really a lot of work. And then you see like 200 views. You see, like, could be better, could be much better. No, I, I saw, I think you wrote that, that comment about changing the topics and speaking about, uh, I don't remember what you told me, uh, but I read your comment. Huh? Uh, there are fantastic people that are doing that job, like uh, Rabona TV, etc., etc. They are just fantastic. It's not that I don't want to do it, huh? but uh, that's something for uh, later or not. Now I will try also with the format of games. Uh, that's something that I wanted to do. But the, the meaning of the channel is to have a, a channel that is giving you the recap with the important things of football. That's, that's the goal of the channel. Um, so that you have like these 10, 15 minutes where you open the channel and you have all your review everything that you couldn't miss about football in, in 10, 15 minutes. Um, and I try to be really uh, objective and I try to give the same space to, to, the, to the different leagues. Uh, but that's the goal of the channel. For people that, you know, like for example, for Premier League fans that do not know what are happening in La Liga, in Serie A, etc., etc., making a... a you know, bigger then yeah the the documentary but also because i speak english but in english i'm not the best narrative guy okay i can explain you a story while i'm live i can uh, make some intonations and whatever but when you do a, a a video like that i believe that the voice it's all super important, the, the way of speaking, of writing. Uh, people are writing a lot, eh? so I'm not. Um, so, But it, it takes time, it takes time. Sometimes when I see 269 people, then I'm saying, like, could be better. But it takes time and we work on it, so step by step. I wanted to collaborate, yes. Um, with a lot of people I know, but I, I have like a bit like, I first I want to grow the channel a bit more before I start. Um, I know a lot about, uh, more about Italian football. Uh, I know, of course, the big moments but these big moments a lot of people know um, when I'm making the shorts about the shirt for example people they don't care huh? when I make it look easy I make right eye I make two shorts one short about a fantastic epic episode that happened with not special shirt that won a lot of cups uh, in that period when they were wearing that shirt with a nice anecdote etc etc nobody cares Nobody cares. I make a video about top 10 assists in Europe. People, they love it. It's crazy. Uh, people like uh, this. They like that. <laughs> Andrit, what channel? This, this channel. This channel. Here, it's called football. So you can click and you can go. The ad, the one dancing is fantastic. Eh? The one dancing, of course, is fantastic. <laughs> okay, guys. You don't 
play yourself bad, but the flaws you see are a charm, frankly, and you are a good storyteller. Your personal stories stand proof. Perfection is for EA FIFA, but it's not even perfect. The game is really bad, by the way. I prefer genuine, which you are. Yeah, yeah, but I believe that my way of speaking, explaining stories, etc., etc., they work really well when I'm live. When I'm live, when I have my tone, when I sat and said, then I'm doing it really well. Um, Beppe, listen to me. There is a Romanian YouTuber who made overnight 200k subscribers. You know how he is chasing player to give them FIFA car, uh, player cards. Mamma mia! Eh, uh, uh, but oh, do, don't forget, guys. I, I'm also Buonanotte, Guardian. I'm also 42. Huh? I have a family. I also live in a place where you know, uh, you know, when you're 20 when you're 25, when you have no family, when you don't care, you just take your backpack and you go and you do. For me, it's not the same. Huh? Uh, for me, it's not the same. There are things that I would have done when I was 20, 25, which I would not do when I'm 42 anymore, which is totally normal. Huh? Uh, you don't know how good 40 minute video do with football fans. Which 40 minute videos? Grande, grande Andrit. Oh, uh, just to be sure, I'm I'm super energic, eh? I have uh, all the strength in the world. I will not give up eh? on the on the channel. I'm doing quite okay, eh? step by step by step by step. I need to work better, work more, and then we will get there. No, no, I'm not. I'm not someone that is quitting really fast. But just to make a, the World Cup is in 2026, if I'm not wrong. We are in 2024. Hey, if the channel doesn't uh, boom boom then it will be difficult for me to go for the channel, I mean, to the World Cup. Then, oh, we have uh, 2024, the Euro. That's a big opportunity to do something, so let's see. Huh? Oh, no, I would not start making Italian. Uh, mixing languages is really bad for the channel because then people, they receive notifications, they go, it's not in their language, and then they give up. Then YouTube, you think it's a really bad video. Then other people, they it's a disaster. Or you open another channel in another language. But two languages on a channel is really, really a bad idea. Ah, maybe that's a good uh, comment for tomorrow. Honestly, I'm that happy today that tomorrow I don't care. Of course, I prefer Atletico to win tomorrow. But honestly, I don't care. Uh, this is how I feel now, today. Um, uh, today, I don't, I don't care about Atletico Inter. They can do whatever they want. Pfft, not my problem. Oh, Atletico Madrid is a really bad moment, by the way. Huh? Really, really, really bad moment. Every time that I'm opening the papers or watching images, they are always like this. They are, they are crying because things are going really bad for them. No, no, honestly, I don't care tomorrow. Um, well, of course, how faster Inter is eliminated, how better. We didn't even speak about Sarri. Sa uh, he dismissed himself, eh? resigned. Psst. Ciao. Um, of course, it will happen right before we will play against them. In, uh, in two weeks, we play against them in Coppa Italia. They will have a new coach. They will have a boost of uh, energy and they will win Coppa Italia. Disaster. 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 No, I don't think it's too big. Too big the gap. Um, what hit? What is this? Seventh, you can learn much from him. Long form. Watch H E T C. I will write it down. 
H I T C sevens. I never heard about a will watch. Yeah, I think so. I believe so. Now, certainty, I don't have certainties, of course. But I believe so, yeah? Yeah. It's not, it's not Lotito that decided, huh? it's Sarri that resigned, he said uh, ciao. It's not because he lost four straight games, guys. Uh, the, the problems are much deeper than that at Lazio. Otherwise, he would not have refused uh, four million euro because uh, of one more year of contract. The problems are much deeper than that. Um, people are... HTC, HTC, even Thomas watched it. Let me check. Maybe I uh, maybe I already watched it without knowing it. Huh? Let me check what it is. A H I T C. Ah, but it's uh, yeah, but oh, guy, wait, 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 because it's different. Huh? Look, look at how, but it's the same as a. Um, I didn't click on it, but it's the same as Rabona TV, etc., etc. Uh, look at the how many videos he's putting. Um, so he, he he put a video two days ago, then six days ago, then ten days ago, then thirteen days ago, then two weeks ago, two weeks ago. Three weeks ago, three weeks ago. Looks like, like at first sight, it's a channel that is doing two videos a week. Two, two videos a week. But the guy, in the meanwhile, is doing a lot of researches. He takes one topic and he works really hard to make a lot of researches, to find information, he's taking his time. In the meanwhile, he's working on a script, collecting all the images, etc., etc., etc. And then they are doing big videos. This is not what I do. Huh? Uh, this is not what I do. This is totally different. I can't do that. I can do it once, I can do it twice. But this is not what, I, it will not be good because you need really these, you need the time in between, because it's a lot of research. Right? The, these people are doing fantastic, but I can't. I do one video for Gigi Stuve. Gigi Stuve, it's easier for me in a way, um, because I know everything about Juve, story i can compare things are going like this you know i can relate i can link it really easy um but i'm always paying attention because i know we have a big community that are counting on me that i give correct information not right information because right or wrong is an opinion but at least that my information i'm giving is correct uh so i i put a lot of time in it in gg tube every single day to be at least accurate in what I'm uh, saying, in the stats that I'm giving, or, you know, or at least to motivate my explanations. And I need to pay attention to what I'm saying, uh, you know it. Um, and then you have the other channel, which is much more work because you have to invest in watching games, highlights, uh, understanding players, uh, linking who is to, and you have to build on that, doing a lot of research, choosing, uh, which topic to speak about and not, and then go. Um, but it, it, it's a lot, it goes fast, then it's editing, it's publishing, and then it's like two videos a day, it takes a lot of time. But that's what I want to do, this is what I like, this is what, uh, um, what the channel stands for, it's for every single day. Otherwise I would have started with a, with a second channel where I do one video every uh, every week and and we go like that but this is this is not what i want i want dynamism i want football i want what i miss now is for example um 
watching a game, being after the game, making a recap with my opinion. This is what I started to do and something that I will do more and more. Look, Fyodor, I will put you a link. That's a, that's for Fyodor, the link that I will put here on the channel. That's a video I made uh, with my friend uh, um, Rocco on the channel about Toto Schillaci, which was really, really, really nice. But then you see the views are for that time, for that time, uh, were also low, small, not fantastic, um, because there is not a lot of interest. I know now I understood that you are a fan of Paolo Rossi, uh, but n this is not what I will do, especially not on uh, the other channel. Um, no, no. I asked last time in the in in the video, ask like you know ni nice channels, uh, nice questions and so on. I made one video that was really really nice about it here, but then the question I receive are are honestly yeah, are not worth making a video about. Um, there is one question, two questions, three questions, but not enough to make a. Um, to make an entire video about a, a Q&A. Ah, yeah. But that's part of the game, eh? some people are playing with that. Buonanotte, good evening Junior Mas, but also to all the other people, was fun, I had a lot of fun, I'm extremely happy. Uh, guys, tomorrow we do a small recap, more concrete, uh, of all the benefits that this qualification has for, uh, for Juventus in the video of today, uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, I, oh, I give you an anticipation, tomorrow, of course, if everything is okay because you never know in life but if everything is okay tomorrow i will be live on the juventus youtube channel uh with two players from the next gen again if everything goes well that's why i never promise because last minute something can change you know an extra training by the coach uh, a last minute uh, meeting they have but tomorrow i should be live with two players from uh juventus next gen uh, one of them speaks English, the other one speaks Italian, um, so it will be a mixed language, um, a mixed language live. The main language will be Italian, uh, but uh, I will ask also some questions in uh, in English. So if you want to be there, Juventus in the afternoon, uh, I believe around uh, five p.m. Uh, two players from next gen normally again eh? because i prefer to say normally you, know, you, you never know in life it happened already yeah you are sure about a player and then you go and then the coach is deciding extra session or physiotherapist or whatever and then you can't you know uh then you cancel or you go without play players it happens eh? um but that's why i always say pay attention but normally tomorrow Two players and i'm happy about that because there are two players that i really wanted to speak with uh bon good buona notte forza juve and i'm happy because in june 2025 usa ciao ciao ragazzi ciao a tutti buonasera forza juve